ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਰਜ਼ੇ ਦੇ ਬੋਝ ਹੇਠ ਦੱਬੇ ਹੋ ਸਮਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਕੀ ਕਰੋ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮਸ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਲਾਈਫ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਮਾੜਾ ਅਸਰ ਪਾ ਸਕਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਚ ਹੋ ਤਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕਰਜ਼ੇ ਨੂੰ ਵੱਧ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਘਟਾ ਕੇ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ ਰਕਮ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਟਰਸਟ ਫ੍ਰੀ ਕਿਸ਼ਤਾਂ ਚ ਬਦਲ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕਰਜ਼ੇ ਤੋਂ ਮੁਕਤ ਕਰਾ ਕੇ ਨਵੀਂ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਜੀਣ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ 18667908984 ਬਿਜ਼ਨਸ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨਸ ਤੋਂ ਹਾਡੀ ਪਰੇਸ਼ਾਨੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਥੀ 1983 ਤੋਂ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਦਫ਼ਤਰਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਫੋਨ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਸੈਟਅਪ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਐਨਸੈਟਲ ਇੱਕ ਮੰਨਿਆ ਪਰਮੰਨਿਆ ਨਾਂ ਹੈ ਪੈਨਾਸੋਨਿਕ ਸਰਵੇਲੈਂਸ ਕੈਮਰਾਸ ਕੰਪਿਊਟਰਸ ਤੇ ਟੈਲੀਫੋਨ ਕੇਬਲਿੰਗ ਕਾਲ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨਸ ਕਾਨਫਰੈਂਸ ਫੋਨ ਇੰਟਰਕਾਮ ਸਪੀਕਰਸ ਵਾਇਰਲੈਸ ਹੈਡਸੈਟਸ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਕਾਨਫਰੈਂਸਿੰਗ ਆਈਪੀ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਤੇ ਵੋਇਸ ਮੇਲ ਸਿਸਟਮਸ ਵੀ ਉਪਲਬਧ ਹਨ ਬਿਜ਼ਨਸ ਕਮਿਊਨੀਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਲਈ ਪੈਨਾਸੋਨਿਕ ਇਕਵਿਪਮੈਂਟ ਵਰਥ ਦੇ ਐਨਸੈਟਲ ਕਮਿਊਨੀਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਨੂੰ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਯਾਦ ਰੱਖੋ ਪੈਨਾਸੋਨਿਕ ਦੇ ਸਮਾਨ ਦੀ ਗਾਰੰਟੀ ਤੇ ਐਨਸੈਟਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸ਼ਨਲਸ ਦੇ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਦਾ ਅਜੀ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਲਓ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦਾ ਜੀ ਕੋਰਫਰ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਮੁਲਾਕਾਤ ਕਰਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਜਾਰਜ ਹਾਫਮੈਨ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਮੈਨੇਜਰ ਹਨ ਐਚ ਆਈ ਵੀ ਵੈਕਸੀਨ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਲੀਡ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਆਓ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਐਚ ਆਈ ਵੀ ਵੈਕਸੀਨ ਕੀ ਕੋਈ ਲੱਭੀ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਕੀ ਕੁਝ ਕਿੱਥੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਕੋਈ ਗੰਭੀਰ ਸਮੱਸਿਆ ਹੈ ਜੋਰਜ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਥੈਂਕਸ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਇਟਸ ਰੀਲੀ ਅ ਪਲੇਜਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਲੈਟਸ ਟਾਕ ਅ ਲਿਟਲ ਬਿਟ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਹਾਊ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ ਗੈਟ ਇਨਵੋਲਵਡ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਪਰਟਿਕੂਲਰ ਰਿਸਰਚ I love that question. Well, basically, uh, I mean, my father is a, an immunologist mm-hmm. by background and um he's been working on the problem of HIV for uh, over the last 20 years now. Mhm. And um and the whole question of, you know, how does this immune system function? How does right. how do all the pieces fit together, mm-hmm. you know? Um and how does it regulate itself in in terms of the protection against foreign shapes and particles, viruses, bacteria and how does it regulate itself and keep itself in equilibrium mm-hmm. um so i've been sort of riding the coattails uh, okay. to some extent you know right. I, i've been very fortunate to have um had this connection to my father who's um been working on it for some time and and i was actually in asia i was in southeast asia between malaysia and thailand mm-hmm. working for a couple marketing companies about three and a half years ago okay and i got a call and he said you know we where the company's having some issues it's it's an HIV vaccine development company and mm-hmm. you know he said uh, I don't know what I'm going to do I might just I might give the uh all the the patents back to the university okay. the university of British Columbia UBC uh-huh. uh what we sp- where we spin out from mm-hmm. and I said and, and you know so that, so that they can they can develop it and I said well you can't do that and he mm-hmm. said well why not I mean who's who's going to do it and I said I'm going to do it I'll Oops. do it <laughs> all right and, right and he said really and uh and I said yes and uh-huh. and next thing I knew I was on a plane back to Vancouver okay um and and assembling a team of of people of immunologists right. scientists and project managers who could really right. bring this HIV vaccine so this means world. that research is being done in the world on this particular issue but just uh, as far as statistics are concerned mm-hmm. how serious is this problem of HIV AIDS Well, contrary to some belief that it's not so much a problem anymore. I mean, we're still looking at 33.3 million people infected. Oh my god. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's it's still not as, you know, it's not right. it, it's it's leveled off a little bit, but right. um and you know, antiretroviral drugs, the therapeutics mm-hmm. have made a, a very substantial difference and are helping. Right. And yet certainly a vaccine is urgently needed mm-hmm. uh, to to stop the spread of it. Great. So uh, you got this idea from there Southeast Asia and came over here and started working on it. So this means research has been done. So where do we stand as far as an vaccination in uh, finding a cure for or HIV will be in the market soon. Sure. So, I mean, where we're at as a field and uh, you know, in HIV vaccine development is that there's this huge hurdle of how to target all the various shapes of HIV. Right. Um, what has been done is we've been able to neutralize specific sh- shapes of HIV, mm-hmm. but as many of us know, I mean, the once HIV enters the body, um we produce antibodies against it right. against one shape of it but the mm-hmm. thing is that's been so tricky with HIV is that it has this ability to morph and mutate very quickly very rapidly within the body and change shape mm-hmm. and that's what has been a huge hurdle is how do you how do you induce
challenge and okay. so far has not been done in the case of a vaccine. Right. Um, but we've got very substantial data now uh, in primates mm -hmm. uh, that shows that we're on the right track, that we have been able to induce this broadly neutralizing response. So basically what you are saying is that you have been able to find a vaccine and it is being used on the animals to uh, see what kind of uh, effect it is having? Correct. So okay. we're, we're developing the HIV in the primate model right. uh, using simian immunodeficiency virus, okay. or SIV, mm -hmm. um, analogous to HIV. And so we've, we've generated, or scientists on our team have, have generated uh, substantial data showing that we can actually induce this, um, this broadly neutralizing, comprehensively broadly neutralizing anti-HIV response. Mm -hmm. That was in, in primates who were already infected with, H with SIV. Okay. What we're designing now is an experiment um, for primates who are not infected with SIV. Right. Um, so that we can, we expect, we'll, I mean, using the same technology mm -hmm. and approach right. um, should be a, a fairly near step to be able to induce or generate this broadly neutralizing response in those that are uninfected as well. Okay, so how, what, what kind of uh, discovery has been made so far and where are you at that level when we can say that after some time we'll have a vaccine for this? Good question. So, I mean, if you look at, um, you know, the, the, the pathway to, you know, distribution mm -hmm. of the vaccine itself. You've got the preclinical animal phases in primates, right. and then you've got clinical phase one in humans. Mm -hmm. So phase one is safety in humans to make sure there's no right. harmful effects, which mm -hmm. we don't expect. And then there is uh, clinical phase two, which is mm -hmm. efficacy in humans. And then phase three is multi-center efficacy in humans. Right. So we're, we're, con we're in the process of conducting uh, the final uh, primate study to be able to be a lead in to human phases, phase mm -hmm. one, um, and basically we're, we're designing this experiment to really demonstrate uh, something that's never been done before, and right. that is broad protection okay. from SIV in primates. Never been done, and we know exactly how to do it. The, the experiment's well designed, so we're really excited and okay. forward to that. And what you're talking is, is just like a network. So basically the immune system is also like a network. And from this network, uh, how are you trying to, uh, you know, kind of pick up uh, different pieces and put them into uh, solving the puzzle? Great question. Yeah, so, so this, this network theory of the immune system mm -hmm. um, has come about. It's, it's a bit of an, it's a fascinating story, actually, because this network theory of the immune system used to be the predominant paradigm mm -hmm. or framework for understanding how the immune system works. Um, it originated back in the early 1970s uh, with a, a Danish immunologist by the name of Niels Yerna. Okay. And he was based at the Basel Institute for Immunology in Switzerland. And my father was a colleague of his, or was working in the same um, institute. Mm -hmm. And Niels Yerna was the first one to propose that the immune system, just as the brain is this network of neurons mm -hmm. um, that have an ability to remember and learn as a network, right. so is the immune system, this network mm -hmm. of cells and antibodies right. that don't just recognize things that are foreign and protect us from things that are foreign, but these antibodies of the system, these cells, also recognize each other mm -hmm. as part of this network Okay, um, that has a memory and a, and a sense of self, just right. as the brain has this memory and a sense of self. Even though, even though they're separate systems, they function along the same um, set of principles mathematically. Mm -hmm. So he was the first one to really just kind of st stumble upon this and recognize that these antibodies actually recognize not just things that are foreign, mm -hmm. but also recognize each other. And he said, wow, well, these antibody, antibody, I mean, antibodies just as a bit of background. Right. These things that target viruses and bacteria and protect us, right? Okay. So the soldiers of the immune system, in a sense. Uh -huh. uh, so so it's, it's been proven, it's factual, that these things, these antibodies recognize each other. Um, and he said, well, this is really interesting, and it seems like the immune system is a, a network, mm -hmm. but how could it all fit together? Right. And because my father came from a background of mathematical modeling mm -hmm. and physics and systems okay. development, he, he said, well, this is a fascinating, right. a, a really intriguing question okay. for a scientist, Absolutely. right? So, so he, he said, well, I really want to get to work on this. Uh -huh. and, and so eventually, actually, um, Niels Yerna, because he was the first one to recognize that the system, system indeed was a network, right. he eventually ended up uh, receiving a Nobel Prize, wow. largely for that hypothesis, this immune uh -huh. network hypothesis, right. which is the idea, proposing uh -huh. it. Um, in, that was in 1984. Right. My father as well, I mean, he continued to develop the theory, mm -hmm. um, 
so that it was more robust and more detailed and so that how you know so that it could mm -hmm. all fit together makes right. sense um, of really how this immune system functioned as a framework right the thing that happened the reason why the immu the network theory of the immune system mm -hmm. is still not currently it's maybe beginning to be but not currently the predominant way of understanding the immune system right is that right around the time when Niels Yerna won the Nobel Prize, uh -huh. largely for his immune network hypothesis, right. a paradox arose, a, a confusion arose mm -hmm. with regard to the network theory, a fundamental part of it. Okay. So they've been, uh, right around that time, they've been mapping the genome of, of the blood okay. um, and all the components of the blood, including the white blood cells, which are immune system cells, right. um, all the way to where the central regulating unit, mm -hmm. or self, of the immune system was expected to be. Okay. And so they mapped all these genes, they found all these genes to where they, f they were expecting to find the gene mm -hmm. to express self okay. in, the, in the network. Okay. And there was no gene. Wow, that's interesting. We'll continue our discussion. Let's go for a small break. And after coming back, we uh, would like to know from you that uh, this network theory, what you are talking, so from this, have some medications or any other treatment come out of this? After this break, we'll talk about this. Excellent.